Hey, hello and welcome everybody uh, to our continued series for Mastering RMM. And for this week, we are going to be talking about the Microsoft uh, integrations. And for today, we'll start with the Microsoft Intune integration. So when we talk about Intune, there's been multiple iterations with Intune. Uh, Microsoft trying to improve that further. Uh, we trying to improve that further. And uh, in this session today, we'll just try to quickly cover uh, what are the key requirements and improvements that we have done to make things very much easy right from the startup point uh, to seeing the data, uh, what we collect and how we can utilize those data at multiple iterations across the ACO function. Let's get started. So starting off with Microsoft Intune integration. So uh, we have tried to redefine the whole uh, integration process with very few steps. Uh, it's just like three steps and you're done with the Intune integration with your CSP accounts. And with the latest improvements that we have done, it supports the GDAP uh, permission rules and model that is being offered up uh, by Microsoft as well. So uh, from a setup and standpoint here, uh, on the left navigation, we'll do a live session, but just quickly from a left navigation perspective, go to settings and in settings, there is marketplace. Uh, you need to explore the integration to find Microsoft Intune as well on the tile that you see there and uh, clicking on the integrate button will take you to simple steps uh, to provide your credentials and you're all set with that. So the first step here is the connection setup where you, you provide in or key in the CSP account details, uh, the multi-factor authentication if you have done it. Now, one tip there is try using it in cognito mode uh, because sometimes if you have your uh, multiple accounts uh, for Microsoft, it might just create conflict uh, with creating the required uh, token authentication to grab all the data out of uh, the CSP account to complete this mapping process. And the second step here is the mapping process. Uh, so in the mapping, it's again, uh, you're trying to map the RMM companies and sites with the corresponding Intune sites out there. So on the left side, you will see the company and site column. You could have one to many relationship being set against that. So uh, all the Intune company accounts can be populated here. Uh, there is a button at the top that says find matches and the find matches will allow you to basically use our AI-based uh, fuzzy logic in terms of finding out the, the commonalities between the companies and sites and the corresponding Intune company and site mapping to match that data information out. And once that's done, you are done with uh, your setup. And the next step is uh, the data viewing. So once you're done with the integration, uh, you can navigate over to the devices and uh, devices computer screen. And at the top, when you see uh, these tabs for general patching integration, and one of the options in the integration is going to show up as Microsoft Intune. Now, uh, if you see, there are certain fields that we, uh, we try to populate and fetch that information. We keep running that cycle of data uh, injection in our system every one R and that date and that data is kind of mapped against every endpoint. Uh, so uh, for each of the devices that we are able to match uh, the references with uh, the MAC address and name combination out there, all of them are going to be populated up here with the required definition and details. Any changes that Microsoft Intune keeps pushing into our system, we keep showing those data out, but there's a cadence that we, we automatically refresh that data and that refresh cycle is set to be one hour uh, today. And uh, here is the quick uh, documentation reference while I do a quick live demo for you. So I'm gonna uh, get my console here. Uh, and as I talked about uh, Intune integration, so again, from the navigation, on the left navigation, under settings, you have marketplace and explore integration. And here I'm gonna search for Intune and Intune is going to show up as one tile. And when you uh, click on this particular tile, that tile kind of opens up a console trying to provide you more details about that integration. And this is the test account where I've already done the integration uh, with, but uh, you'll see a button on the right-hand side called as integration. Uh, in my case, it's showing up as an update button. I'll still click on the update button here. And the very first step is uh, you need to set up the connection. So when you're trying to set up a connection, you can put any name over here. Uh, this name function is primarily required for 
uh, knowing what options are available because you could add more than one CSP account integrations with that. So you can click on the button at the bottom that says add connection. Uh, click on generate token kind of pushes you to the Microsoft website. Uh, that's where you're going to be authenticated against the CSP account. I'm going to pick one of our trial or test accounts that I have integrated with. And even as you see, even I'm trying to do it in incognito. Uh, that's my recommendation just to avoid any kind of uh, issues. So once uh, the Microsoft authentication is completed, you'll see a message something at the top that says token was generated successfully. And when you click on the proceed button, uh, you will now be proceeded toward the site mapping. And one of the things, uh, again, is the company and site references in the RMM. And on the right hand side, you see the Intune site. So this is uh, all the companies and sites that I'm pulling from my test account instance. If I'm just going to pick up random ones here, uh, just for showing you how this works, uh, you can do that. Or here's the button, magic button that I was talking about, the find matches. So find matches uses the logic to uh, match the company names and the site names from the from the Microsoft Intune. Uh, basically, it's kind of uh, available across other integrations available in the Azure console as well. Once you're done with that, the save and proceed uh, just gives you a confirmation that I went completed the mapping across all of them. Just a reminder there. And all right, we're done with the integration. It took less than like two minutes for me to set up the integration. The same is gonna be with you as well. Uh, so once the integration is activated, the next part is right on the device's computer screen. So you can click here, or I have it uh, set up, I already open up the device's screen here. Uh, you can click on this little integration drop down button, and it shows all the integrations that I have here with my test account. And the second one here is the Microsoft Intune. Now, as soon as you click on the Microsoft Intune, uh, you'll see at the very top, there are some column headers being made available. Uh, we call this as integration fields in the system. And these integration fields will basically ingest any data that's coming in from the vendor. Again, trying to make it as a single point of um, uh, class or single pane of references for any data. You don't need to move back and forth between RMM and Intune, but this relationship or association kind of helps you get all the right information right at the tip of your uh, you know, accessibility here. Now. Uh, in this case, because this is just test account, uh, I don't have much of the data, but if there is uh, a data, all the information should be populated up here. And <clears throat> once this data is, is in the ASIO console, you could actually use monitors uh, on top of it. So I'll just quickly show you how you can use that monitor. So you can go to the alert management monitors section. And in the monitors section, there is a button that says create monitor on the right hand side. Uh, top corner. So as soon as you click on the create monitor button, uh, the, the create monitor screen will open up. In the type, you need to select integration field. Now, integration field is any fields that are coming in based on the integration that has been set up in your, your account. Uh, and in the integration name, uh, you'll find all the ones that are available for you. I'm going to pick up Microsoft Intune here. And uh, Intune would basically give you additional fields that are made available in the system. Sorry, the wrong one, all right? And starts with the integration field type. All these are the different types that we have here in the system. Uh, you can uh, you can choose date picker. Let me see if there's anything for the date picker. Up down, there is any. Uh -oh. There we go, last one uh, worked up. So here are all the uh, integration fields data that is coming up from Microsoft. And I can say, like, for example, compliance, uh, and it says uh, equals, I say not compliant as the keyword. Uh, anytime, uh, any endpoint that moves into a stage of non-compliant, uh, this is gonna trigger uh, a ticket notification uh, you can use the add automation button and run automation down on the endpoint directly. And you can do the same thing for your closures as well. So you could have a Microsoft Intune integration, say text box, and I'm going to say compliant. I'm going to find that here. Compliance. I'm going to say equals compliant. 
right? So this is a very basic monitor that I've applied. You can apply that to your target endpoints by selecting the target machines. Uh, basically, you now have a, a full end-to-end -end cycle. Your integration is pushing data to ASIO. ASIO is monitoring your fields. Uh, field automation can be triggered down on the endpoint. And whenever the machine goes back into the compliance state, the ticket's going to mark as resolved. That, that completes the end-to-end -end cycle for you from ticketing perspective or in tune. Uh, we are adding more functions in the Intune in the upcoming releases, so please stay tuned. Uh, and uh, that's about it for our Intune integration today. So stay tuned. We have a follow-up session coming up tomorrow uh, to talk about one of the other integration we have uh, for Microsoft uh, Defender. And I can see there is one quick question. Do we need to do this or is it in place once we enable the integration? Uh, the monitor piece is an extension. It's not a mandatory option. So once the integration is set up, you should be able to build this out uh, by yourself for any fields that is being populated or imported in the system. Uh, but it's not mandatory that we need to set up monitors. All right, then. Uh, so we'll we'll connect tomorrow to go through our Microsoft Defender integrations. And then uh, as our Thursday uh, session, we'll just go through a live Q&A and other uh, the questions around those things. So stay tuned with us. Thank you.